Hello, and welcome to Million Labs. Today we thought we would ask Simon to explain more about input forms. Simon, can you review some things we should know about using input forms? Maybe you can even show us an example where you create a new form. So you have input forms down the bottom here. So this is a way of getting data into your app from a user. You might have a text box that says first name. It's 40. All right. Let's make this 100 long, something like that. So I've got a text box there that says first name. I'm going to build a form. And I'm going to take an input box and I'm going to drag and drop it below it. And I'm just going to line it up so that they're all lined up. Let me put this down a bit, put it right underneath it. There we go. So I've got now an input box. So you can see it's input A. I'm going to immediately change that to the input first name. So I know it's reference, you know, which, which one I'm going to get the first name from. And with an input, I can have what's called a placeholder. And this is what appears in the box, in this case, type here, before anybody's typed anything into. You'll have seen this all the time. When you go to a form, it's got, you know, it says email at the bottom and it's got joe at blogs.com or something like that, an example of what it might be. So again, here you could put in a placeholder. So I could put in John Smith or John, because it's first name, something like that. And that would just show as a placeholder inside that input box. I could now copy and paste that, put a gap between them, and I could put last name in here. And I can change this one to be, because I copied it, it says first name copy. I'm just going to change this to last name and get rid of the word copy off the end there. And I'm going to put Smith in the placeholder there. So here we go. And then I've got a button that I could use to submit the form. Nice and simple. So with each of your inputs, you can specify what type of format of input that you're expecting. And this is kind of key to getting good quality data into your database. So if it's a name, we would expect the person to be typing in text. But we have a bunch of options actually here. So if it was like their age, we don't want text in there. We want a number in there. So what we can do is, let's say we're going to have another box here, and we're going to ask them for their age. And so I've got this input here, and I'm going to call this one age, and I'm going to put in here 23 as an example. But I'm now going to change this from text to be an integer because I want round numbers. I don't want decimal because I don't want I'm five and a half. I want I'm 23. So I'm going to put in an integer. And what that will tell Bubble is that this is expecting an integer, and it won't allow the user to put in text or anything else but a number into that box now. So if we just preview this to the, the uh, input for the age and I try to type in letters, I'm, I'm hitting letters on my keyboard and nothing's happening. As soon as I hit numbers, it starts to show them in the box. So this basically will stop anybody from putting anything other than a number in that box. And I can actually even be more granular here. I can set a minimum maximum range so I could have one and I could have 100 as my maximum. And Bubble enforce that now. So this would stop me putting in zero in here and it would stop me putting in 101. So if I try to put zero, immediately the border goes red. If I try to put in 101, the border will go red. But if I put in 99, the border's fine. So Bubble can do quite a lot of user input checking to make sure that it makes sense for you by you specifying what type it is. And we want this as a number because actually we might want to do some calculations on it. How many days is it until their birthday? Or, you know, if it was a date or, you know, um, are they older than 18 if we want to check for alcohol or, or, or whatever it happens to be. So with our inputs, we want to make sure that they're the right types. And all the inputs down the left-hand side here have got different kind of types, as it were. You know, so if it's going to be a date time picker, it will be a date and time. Thanks, Simon. Now you understand input forms more, including how to use placeholders, 
and get users to submit the correct data. Congrats!